Hey, it's Chad Waterbury. I'm here to talk to you today about the relationship between force and motor unit recruitment. Now, whether you want to get bigger, stronger, faster, leaner, this is really essential information to understand. So I want to go over it briefly today. So I had it plotted on the board here. Force is on the y-axis. Motor units is on the x-axis. We have 0% force at the bottom, 100% force at the top. And for the motor units, we have 0% recruitment on the left, 100% recruitment on the right. So when we're looking at training athletes to develop more power, we want to use high force activities because that's what helps with the rate of force development, their speed, their reaction time, just their overall their explosive force. So when we look at this, we know that at 100% force, they have 100% motor unit recruitment. Now if we look at a bodybuilder or someone who just wants to add lean muscle mass, you have to recruit as many motor units as possible and exhaust those motor units. So if we look at it from the other angle and say, okay, if you're going to recruit 100% of the motor units, as many as you can, then you have to develop high levels of force because the two go hand in hand. High levels of force, high levels of motor unit recruitment. Low levels of force, low levels of motor unit recruitment is plotted here. Now this was taken research back in the 70s and I got this from the outstanding text, uh, The Human Brain by Dr. Nolte. Anyway, so the relationship here is very clear and we're talking about training for power or even training for muscle mass. What I always tell people is the goal is to be able to get up in this region because that's 100% force, 100% motor unit recruitment. Now you can't do this all the time because it's very exhausting on your recovery capabilities and if you train heavy all the time you know it can be really hard on, the, hard on the joints but the main thing to keep in mind the first point I want to make is this is the area of the spectrum that you really want to be concerned with when you're dealing with power athletes or when you're dealing with muscle growth so when we look at the most basic relationship between force and motor unit recruitment then we have to look at this simple equation of force equals mass times acceleration now imagine mass is just the, the weight that you're lifting. There's not a perfect carryover between mass and weights, but for our discussion, we're just going to say the, the mass equals the weight. So the 300 pound barbell is the mass. Now the faster you accelerate it, the higher your force is going to be. So that's why I always talk about accelerating the lift as much as you can, applying maximum acceleration to each lift. Because since acceleration is a component of force, the higher the acceleration, the higher the force, the higher your motor unit recruitment. So what I'll talk about is, uh, an example that I like to give is, if you have uh, dumbbells, just imagine a, a biceps curl, because it's very easy to visualize, and you're using probably 50-60% you know, of your one rep max, and you're just lit, you're curling it slowly. You could curl it faster, but you don't. So you just curl it slowly. You might be in this region right here, so you might have recruited this many motor units. Now, if you immediately apply maximum acceleration, in other words, if you speed up acceleration to its maximum point, then you could theoretically tap into these motor units that are left dormant. Now, this is really important information to understand because it's this area of the spectrum that contains the largest, strongest motor units. So if we look at the motor unit recruitment here, we see that at the lowest levels of force, you have the S motor units. S just stands for the slow twitch muscle fibers that are contained within those motor units. So they result in very low levels of force when they're recruited. So as more force is needed, then another set, another class of motor units come into play, the FR motor units, which stands for fatigue resistant. So these can produce more force than the slow motor units, but they have some um, endurance characteristics. Okay, so they can develop more force, but they can fire for uh, quite a bit of time. If you just want a gross generalization, you can think of the slow motor units as being able to fire for hours and hours like in a marathon, whereas the fatigue resistant uh, motor units might be able to contract maybe for five minutes before they really fatigue out. Then, as even greater levels of force are needed, the FF motor units come into play. Now, FF stands for fast fatigable. 
because again, the motor unit classification is based on the muscle fiber it's connected to. So the muscle fibers within the FF motor units fatigue very quickly. Some of them can last up to a minute while others fatigue in 10 seconds or less. So here's how you should think of it. All the way to the left, the first motor units that come into play are the smallest, weakest motor units that can maintain their force for hours and hours and hours. And all the way to the right, all the way to the right of the spectrum are the largest, strongest motor units that can only fire for just a few seconds before they fatigue. So we're looking at hours and hours over here and just a few seconds over here. So this is really important. We're thinking about the duration of your sets when you're training for strength and power. Because we know that at maximum force, we have maximum motor unit recruitment. However, the largest motor units all the way over to the right can only sustain their activity for a few seconds, let's just say 10 seconds. All right, so that means if any set, if any continuous contraction lasts longer than 10 seconds, you know that you're not recruiting all of your motor units. Another way to say it is after 10 seconds, it's very likely, it's almost sure that motor units are going to stop, start dropping out. And the first motor units to drop out are the biggest, strongest ones. Why? Because they have the, the um, lowest endurance characteristics and Hedeman's size principle tells us that the motor units that are largest have the largest motor neurons and the motor neuron determines its recruitment order. So the motor units with the smallest motor neurons are recruited first and the motor units with the largest motor neurons are recruited last. But they're the first to drop out as soon as uh, force is decreased. So you can think of force being decreased either because you're purposely slowing it down, slowing down the lift, or because you're fatiguing and your muscles can no longer pr uh, produce the same amount of force. In either case, your motor unit recruitment and your force production is shifting back to the left. So if you take um, a one rep max, if you lift your true one rep max, you're all the way over here to the left. Because even though the movement is very slow, you're, you're applying maximum acceleration to a huge load because when you're dealing with your one rep max, your maximum acceleration, of course, is very slow. So even though the acceleration might be low, the load is very high. But we have 100% force. Then we have 100% motor unit recruitment. Now for a lighter load, we have maximum acceleration, like let's say a weight that you could lift 10 times. For the very first rep, if it's a biceps curl, you curl it as hard and fast as you can with perfect technique, okay? People, I always get nervous when I talk about maximum acceleration because for novice lifters, I'm, I'm afraid that they're going to really kill their technique. But perfect technique is paramount. So once you have the technique in place, then you can really focus on applying maximum acceleration. So I just want to give that little aside there. But when you apply maximum acceleration, then you tap in to those high threshold motor units, those FF motor units, with the largest ones only being able to maintain their force output for just a few seconds. Okay? So, as a quick overview, I always say that if you're looking to get bigger, stronger, faster, you want to lift heavy some of the time, because when you lift heavy, you're applying maximum force. So I'm talking about loads that you could lift five times or less. So you're always going to have maximum force production, maximum motor unit recruitment. You don't really need to worry about speed so much with heavy loads. Yes, you should try to accelerate the load, but the weight already takes care of itself. Very heavy load mandates maximum motor unit recruitment. Then for lighter loads, loads that you could lift faster, you always want to apply maximum acceleration because that's what gets you all the way to the right of the spectrum. That's what taps in to this last spectrum of motor units that usually sit on the sideline. And it's these motor units that have the greatest potential